Hi there everyone and welcome to today's video. Today we are going to be talking about the cancel entries and reverse transaction functions on the fixed asset ledger. Um, so you can use these functions basically to reverse or cancel entries which have been posted to your fixed asset ledger and we're just going to run through them to show you how they work. So uh, what I'm going to do is let me just navigate to my fixed assets here and I'm going to come into my Mercedes 300 um, for which I have a book value of 9833 at the moment. So uh, you can see here we calculated um, depreciation on the 31st of Jan 2024. We've got uh, a value of 167 there and then we've got the uh, original acquisition of the fixed asset there which was on the 1st of Jan 2024 which was for 10,000 GBP. And the two functions here we're going to focus on um, are the cancel entries and the reverse transaction. Okay, So uh, we'll work with the uh, depreciation entry because we can easily calculate that again and I just want to show you what the difference is between the cancel and the reverse transaction. So um, what I'm going to do here is just highlight the line for the depreciation transaction here and I'm going to hit reverse transaction here. Okay, So uh, what this will do is it will give me a page here that will show me all of the entries that are going to be reversed. Okay, So if I extend this out you can see here I've got my general ledger entries here um, that have been generated from the um, calculation of my depreciation. Then I've got a fixed asset ledger entry here, entry number two for fixed asset number 10, which was the fixed asset ledger entry. Okay, so basically, let me just press close on this. This entry here was generated when we calculated depreciation. And what the reverse transaction is going to do is it's basically going to reverse out all entries to all ledgers, that's the fixed asset ledger and the general ledger as we just saw on this page here, it's going to reverse all of those out for us. Okay, So let me go ahead and press reverse now. And I do get a message here and that's I think because we've got a fixed asset involved in this transaction so it tells me to reverse these entries, correcting entries will be posted. There are one or more fixed asset ledger entries and therefore we should consider using the fixed asset function cancel entries. Um, and then I can say, do I want to reverse the entries, yes or no? Okay, so I'm just going to say yes because we're going to come back and look at the cancel entries function here afterwards. So let me just say yes. Um, and what that will do is it will post the entries in the background and it will say the entries were successfully reversed. Now here, look, I've got another entry, which is the opposite side of my original depreciation entry. OK, so it's cancelled out that depreciation entry. And also, if I go to my GL registers here, what we can see is we've got the last entry here was a reversal. OK, so here's the original entry um, that we posted for the depreciation. And here is the reversing entry. And you've got your general ledger, your fixed asset ledger transactions all under there as well. OK, so that's the reverse transaction. Um, just to confirm and, and run through again what that does, uh, we highlighted the original entry for the depreciation. We pressed reverse transaction. That showed us a list of the associated entries with this particular entry. And when we agreed to reverse, it basically posted a transaction to the general ledger and the fixed asset ledger because those were the two ledgers involved with the original transaction. And it just posted reversing entries to those ledgers. That's why we see here now a positive and a negative with the same document number on the same date for the same fixed asset. OK, so what we'll do now is we'll go ahead and uh, use the cancel entries function. But before we do that, we're just going to go ahead and calculate depreciation again for our fixed asset. So let me just jump back and say calculate depreciation. And I'm going to do this for January. And 
just to separate our entries, I'll set the document number as Jan 24-2 and the description as Jan 2024 depreciation number two. So I think that looks good. Let's go okay. Uh, it tells me one geo journal line was created. I'm gonna view that journal and we can see I've got my document number, my description with the same amount for depreciation again. Okay, so let me go post and yes and if I now go back to my fixed asset again, the book value has changed to 9833 and I can see my most recent entry here, Jan 2024-2 with my description in here as well with the relevant amount. Okay, so that's the acquisition cost. Here's the depreciation. There's the cancelled depreciation the first time around. Uh, the reverse transaction rather and here is the latest depreciation entry which what we're going to do now is we're going to cancel that okay so previously we used the reverse transaction this time we're going to go cancel entry so again i'm highlighting this line and i'm going to say cancel entries okay so uh, what this will do is it will give me a, uh, a prompt box here where I can um, set a new posting date and enter my new posting date in here if I want to okay so I guess we can use this uh, guys in uh, in in the example where we need a different posting date for whatever reason I don't know you've closed the period or something like that you can use uh, the cancel FA entries and you can say use a new posting date and enter the posting date in here I won't do that in this case but you get the idea if we mark this as yes and put in a new posting date it will transfer that posting date to the transaction okay so for now I'm just going to press ok and it tells me the ledger entries have been transferred to the journal okay so um, just bear in mind if you're using uh, uh, a depreciation book which, which is integrated to the general ledger you're looking for the FAGL journal if you're not integrated to the general ledger you're looking for the fixed asset journal okay so it just depends on how you're using the um, fixed asset ledger in your BC environment but here we are integrated so let me go to my fixed asset GL journal and what we see is that there's a line been inserted in here with the relevant amount and the fixed asset on one side and the posting date is the same as the original posting date because we didn't ask for that to be changed right um, so what I need to do is just put the other side of my journal in here so this is the difference here whereas the reverse transaction basically just reversed the transaction on the same date with all of the same GL accounts here I'm able to define my posting date and select a different GL account if I need to do that right so um, I need to select um, a GL account here and I'm just going to select this one here I think that should be okay so um, I'm then going to go ahead and post my journal okay so let me go post and yes so it tells me the journal lines were successfully posted and let me go back now to my fixed asset and what we can see here is in the FA ledger entries look I don't see my Jan 24-2 document number right so the cancel entries function there unlike the reverse transaction which created a, a, an opposing entry the cancel entries function has removed that entry altogether okay so where is that entry now well if I go back firstly I'll just show you look the book value is again back to 10,000 but now if I go in to my related history and error ledger entries here I can see the original entry um, for the uh, depreciation Jan 24-2 and here is the journal that we posted afterwards that corrected the entry okay so um, that's really the difference between the cancel entries just to recap there what we did was we calculated depreciation we went to the book value found the error FA ledger entry and we hit cancel entries that then creates a journal which I posted and once posted the value is removed from the FA ledger entries and it's transferred to the error ledger 
entries. Okay, so we can review them here in the FA error ledger entries. And then we can go on and calculate depreciation or post whichever transaction it was that we were reversing again. Okay, so that's everything I wanted to run through. I hope you found it useful. Thanks for watching and uh, I'll see you on the next one.